tight. First time letting the clutch out on the KLR 650. Let's fire her up. Mm, nice little purr. Hey guys, Steve Camerad here with ADV Pulse. We just got done testing the new Kawasaki KLR650. It's exciting because it's got fuel injection and it's also back. It was missing from Kawasaki's lineup for a little bit. Um, the KLR has been around for a very long time, almost as long as I've been on this planet, actually a little bit, little bit longer, but we don't want anybody to figure out how old I am. Um, what's new? Well, all the KLR guys, all the diehards, this bike has a real serious cult following. They're gonna to wanna to talk about the fuel injection. Yes, it's fuel injected, all new suspension, and I gotta say the bike feels pretty planted. It does have more travel in the front than it does in the rear. Uh, we'll get into the nitty gritty details in the article that we'll link below, but you go over rocks and stuff and it feels uh, neutral like it should. For the motor, it's got a lot of new stuff in it. Uh, camshafts are all new uh, with different profiles. The uh, exhaust is new, it's actually a little smaller, which is supposed to give it better mid-range, as well as the Fuel injection system is tuned for mid-range and linear power. This thing is super linear. Uh, the dashboard is digital now, which, you know, it's just an LCD display, but that's a big step up from the old analog clocks, which, who knows, maybe a lot of the old KLR guys are actually, that's what they want. Um, but unfortunately, we've moved forward a little bit and we get this LCD display now and no tachometer, which I thought was weird, but you don't really need it. Uh, it takes a long time to get to the rev limiter on this thing, and when you get there, it's pretty soft. Um, the windshield on this bike works great. It actually has an adjust adjustment that you have to remove the windshield and then remove four Allen keys and then move these brackets up. It's a little, I don't know, you, you've got to, it's a commitment. There's no quick adjustment on that, but that's what keeps the price down on this motorcycle. Um, in the low position, because that's where I kind of like my windshields, uh, I didn't have any problem with it, no buffeting, uh, even at like 90 miles an hour. Um, and I wore a dirt helmet for this trip and really no complaints uh, as far as that goes. The saddlebags that you get for the additional uh, money there, they, they work okay, they're just fine. Um, I'm not thrilled with them, but they are key to the bike, so that's kind of a nice thing. And they're, they're simple, which is what everything in this bike is. Everything on it is very simple, and that's, again, just what speaks to all the KLR owners. Um, I do wish it got an 18 inch rear wheel for, you know, the obvious reasons of dirt bike tires coming 18 inches and adventure bike tires, a lot of them come in 17s, but you've kind of limited yourself there by still having that 17 inch rear rim. I don't know why Kawasaki did that. Um, they just kind of said, yeah, that's just what, what's in the books. So you get this no frills motorcycle. Um, you do get an LED headlight though, which is, I mean, that's great. Uh, if you get the big package with the LED fog lamps, they're also really bright and they increase your visibility. They kind of look similar to the BMW ones that always break off the bottom. Uh, no one broke any off this trip, so um, I don't know, maybe these will last. Now, the frame on this bike, it got all redesigned. It, it's got a new swing arm. And what that does is it allows the bike to be a little bit more stable. It's 30 millimeters longer. And the rear subframe got reinforcements. Now, what does that really do to the bike? Well, it makes it a little bit more stable. It also has uh, beefier axles in it. 
and a beefier swing arm pivot, so it does go down the road really well. Um, some people say that it feels a little unsettled. Well, it's lighter than most big full-size adventure bikes, but it's heavier than a dirt bike, so I think that's where the unsettled feeling for some journalists is going to come in. Uh, for me, it does take some getting used to because this bike lives in such a middle ground. One thing that's a little disappointing, this bike did gain some weight. It now gained 24 pounds. It's over 200 or 450 pounds. And what that does is it takes away the advantage that it used to have over the large adventure bikes. Yes, this bike is still much less intimidating to ride and less uh, of a handful, say, you know, than a full, full size 1200 cc adventure bike. Um, and that's where this bike really shines. Uh, when you're out on the trail and you're with your couple of your buddies, if someone's on a big, heavy adventure bike, uh, full size, and you're on a KLR 650 and it gets a little dicey and tough, this bike's actually gonna be easier to ride. That being said, it's not on the same level as the big adventure bikes. I feel a bit more comfortable on like something super full size with really good suspension and really good brakes. This bike is not that high performance focused, which is kind of cool because it allows you to relax a little bit. You're on a kind of a, just a relaxed ride. The fuel injection system on it is super linear, so um, you know when you open up the throttle, it's very linear, and it rarely feels like it's uh, breaking the back end loose. It almost feels like it has traction control because nothing is frantic. Is that a good thing? Um, yeah, if that's what you want, because the KLR people, they kind of know what they really want. It has a cult following. People that own them love them. They put a ton of miles on them. They're super reliable. Um, that being said, this bike is not gonna be the go down the highway and cross the entire country at 90 miles an hour type of bike. Um, this bike is gonna slot itself into you know more back roads. It'll do 80 down the highway. We're at about seven or 8,000 feet here in New Mexico. Um, so we didn't quite hit 100 miles an hour on a closed road, of course, but it's been, it's been really good. The motor's you know, fun, it's capable, it's linear. That fuel injection system puts down really good power and it feels good. Off-road, the bike feels pretty confidence-inspiring. There's uh, not a lot going on there that's gonna make you think, oh my God, like, I've gotta make sure that I'm perfectly balanced to go over this. Uh, you wanna make sure that in the rear shock, it has a rebound adjustment. You wanna make sure you adjust that because if the bike is a little unsettled in the corners, that's where you can pick it up. Otherwise, it's pretty balanced. The bike's smaller, it's easier to handle than some of the really big adventure bikes, and that's where you're gonna make any of your friends who you go on a ride with that are on a big 1200cc adventure bike, you know, loaded up with all this gear, it, they're gonna have problems that you're not gonna have on this bike. This bike's also just completely bulletproof. It has been for years. Uh, the KLR forums will have this thing where they talk about a doohickey. Um, it's something that KLR lovers, you know, just, they love talking about it, asking you if you've upgraded yours. Um, Kawasaki has not upgraded this from the 2014 and a half model. There is no recall on it, but that's gonna be a big question from the Kawasaki KLR army that's out there. Um, so no, they did not redesign the doohickey. Braking performance on the KLR 650 is better than before, much better almost, but it's still bad at 80 miles an hour. You get a bunch of front brake and it doesn't have a lot of bite. The rear brake has a ton of bite, um, but nothing that like, I would say, oh, I've got to ditch this and go get a, like some large supermoto kit. Um, it just could have a little bit more bite for my taste. But again, for the people that are going to be buying this bike, they're not looking for something super performance oriented. They're looking for something that's easy to ride. And that's what this bike is. It's easy to ride. It's easy to kind of jump on it. Um, you know, I, I did this whole trip in dirt bike gear and that's, that's kind of cool that this bike makes you really just take yourself back and you don't have to get overwhelmed or worry about having the latest and greatest gear or the latest GPS unit. Um, there is a little fairing mount there for GPS units or cell phone units, which I used mine for, uh, my GPS unit. Um, nice little thing on there right above the windshield. It does have a USB port and a 12 volt cigarette lighter normal port. Uh, the USB port's covered by this plastic piece or rubber piece and it is horrible. Whoever made it should never make anything ever again. It just flies off and it bounces all around. I really hate it. I hate that thing. Um, but having a USB charger uh, on your bike is, I mean, it's awesome. It's super handy. 
and it's nice that they threw that in there instead of being like, oh, we've got this accessory for $40. This is just kind of simple stuff here. Um, the handlebars do have a nice bend to them. You can rotate them up a little bit. They are still just a 7 8 bar, um, which, you know, nobody's really using the 7 8 bars except for somebody who's really building a budget bike here, and that's exactly what this thing is. Seating position is pretty good. The, the couch cushion that it has for a seat is nice and soft. You can slide around on it because it's one piece, and the, uh, the distance from the seat to the foot pegs is nice. I didn't feel cramped on it. I didn't feel you know, like I would need to run out and buy bar risers. The only thing is, is that I did notice that the foot pegs feel a little far forward. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some aftermarket companies that want to sell aftermarket foot pegs that may be down and back a little bit. If you want to stand and go a little faster, um, you do kind of feel like you're pulling on the handlebars a little bit much. Um, that's always kind of been a thing with the KLRs. That's, that's standard. So, you know, there's some things you can customize with this bike. But again, this bike just is extremely solid and extremely reliable. Overall, I do not think that this bike will be a massive upgrade if you have a KLR 650 from the current, you know, previous generations, especially the newer than 2014 when it got a little suspension upgrade. Um, I don't, I don't think it is a massive upgrade. So I wouldn't run out and buy one if you own a KLR 650. But what I would do is if you had a KLR 650 and you wrecked it, which is hard to do because they're so reliable, they're kind of like a wheelbarrow. They always work. Um, or if it went missing because somebody borrowed it for an extended period of time, then yeah. If you loved your KLR 650, the new one's better. It's better than the original carbureted versions. Um, that being said, this bike uh, for me is exciting in the way that it is the only one in its class. It is a single cylinder, fuel injected, adventure bike that has wind protection. It has a frame that can handle some uh, touring and sport touring applications. And really that is, puts it in a class of its own. There are no other motorcycles in that class. This bike actually rings in at $6,699 for the non-ABS model. Um, you can also get this bike for $6,999 with ABS. That's off-road tuned. Now the guys that were on the ABS uh, equipped bikes, we traded and it is, it's, it's an off-road tuned ABS. It doesn't interfere too quickly and it gives you a ton of safety on and off-road. I'm a big fan of it. That's pretty much where I would be if I was going to buy one of these. The ones that we tested ring in at a, just under $8,000, but you get crash bars, uh, upper and lower. You get fog lights and you get these uh, little saddlebags that are there. They've been really uh, helpful on this trip. I don't know if it's worth it, uh, especially if you're the type to put the milk crate on the KLR. Um, that joke's been made about a, a thousand times on this press launch. And, uh, you know, that's the crowd that this bike speaks to. It's, it's either the crowd that wants to get an affordable bike that they can ride around and have a good time on, or it's the guys who just love having a KLR. They love having this bike that's not very fancy, and then they love taking it everywhere. I mean, I've heard stories about guys doing LA bar sort of Vegas, guys riding down in Baja, Mexico. And that's kind of what happens when you get a KLR 650, you ride it and you make a bunch of memories. Another thing Kawasaki's done for this motorcycle is they've gone in and they've done a lot of work for vibration damping. Uh, it doesn't have a double counterbalancer motor in it. They kept it simple, but uh, you know, rubber dampened foot pegs, which you can kind of feel flex under your feet a little bit. The foot pegs are also rubber and you would have to swab them out to have metal foot pegs. There is no like removable rubber chunk. Uh, the handlebars are also rubber mounted and then they've got big rubber mounted bar ends at the end of the wider handlebars than the old iterations. It's wonderfully smooth. It feels really great, but you still kind of remember that you've been on a single at the end of the day when you're kind of like touching your phone or something, you can kind of feel it. But when you're on the highway, there's no complaints from anybody. Not, not one person complained about that. What everybody kind of did complain about was shifter height. The shifter's pretty uh, low, so getting your toes under there to shift while you're standing is, it's a task. Uh, we tried to go in and remove the shifter, go up one click on the splines and reinstall it. What happened though was that the shifter then hits uh, a little guard underneath the engine case there. So you cannot um, adjust the shifter and let up unless you took a little material off the shifter or maybe remove that case. Again, the KLR people are gonna just handle that. You know, there's a good aftermarket uh, world for this bike, but there's also just people who will do the custom work themselves 
and really handle that. Why does someone love this bike? Well, like if it, if it had a report card, it gets all C's. But somehow getting all C's gets it on the honor roll. Um, everything about it is, you know, not amazing and it's not bad. But that's kind of what you're getting into when you get a KLR. And that's kind of, you know, that whole KLR group. Uh, there's a big following for it and that's you're going to be part of it whether you want to be or not uh, there's going to be people who want to talk to you about their KLR their KLR experiences and you're going to be like I didn't know this was a thing when I bought this bike but that's the that's the fun part about motorcycling is it brings people together um, and like everybody that has been on this trip has a KLR story so it's just you could be part of that group and you could ride this motorcycle and you could have your adventures with this bike that just gets all C report card man right down the middle everything's a C nothing great nothing bad and that's kind of just what you get for the price um, I hope to see you guys out there and I hope you have an adventure if you have any questions check the link below because I'm probably going to get into this, those things about this bike uh, down there and if not leave us a comment or comment on the article and I'll actually reply to you because I try to do that uh, see you guys out there Oh yeah, I'm supposed to do that thing and then I can play the, the goofball uh, outtakes. Whew, I'm tired. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, the saddlebag. Hit your saddlebag. That's all. Don't, don't scratch the bags, dude. Here we go. carbureted KLR keep it until it either goes missing uh, you break it which is almost impossible because these bikes are reliable like a wheelbarrow they always work especially the ones with the foam tires uh, a stable it's super reliable it's been around for a very long time and uh, I want you to kind of imagine oh hey buddy come here I got, I got bags on. Be nice of Ned to give us these double take mirror uh, goggle wipes. Um, he makes these mirrors that everybody, you know, replaces these with. They get a ram mount. I really, I really like them. I and mean, you know, we could use them on this. Now it's a double take mirror. <laughs> you got to do a double take. What? What? <laughs> Steve, you can print out all this stuff from Red Bull. Yeah, I do. Wow, man. I don't. Oh, <laughs> He didn't want to. I was going to try to smack him in your face. I know, that's why I was getting off the bike. You can't pee in the water, dude. It's gonna mess it up for the fish, man. It's gonna have a little protein for him. Double check and figure it out, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't believe everything you read on the interwebs. <laughs> Wait, you said don't believe? Don't believe it. Unless I post it. If I post it, it's true. 100% guaranteed.